What's the hardest leak code question you might realistically see in a FANG interview? That's the question I set out to answer in this video. Not a theoretical puzzle with a 0.1% acceptance rate, not the newest problem nobody's attempted. I'm talking about the most challenging question that top tech companies actually use to determine whether to give you a job. I've analyzed thousands of leak code problems and found something fascinating. The truly difficult questions aren't always the ones that you'd expect. Why does this matter? Because for some reason, our industry has decided that if you want a job, you need to solve ridiculously hard coding problems on the spot. Now, here's where it gets interesting. New research from interviewing.io revealed something that I didn't expect. Engineers who focused on hard problems were much more likely to work at FANG companies than those who solved hundreds of medium ones, even though easy and medium questions comprise the majority of questions companies ask. So if you want to increase your chances of working on world-class scale problems at big tech companies, get the prestige and status that comes with it, and most importantly, earn those massive salaries, you've come to the right place. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Steve Wynn, the YouTuber formerly known as Meta, or Uncle Steve. And I quit my 18 year career at Amazon as a principal engineer to help as many people as possible uplevel their tech careers. If you want more from me, subscribe to my channel, join my free weekly newsletter. And if you wanna put some of these ideas into practice, join the accountability channel on my Discord. Links for everything are in the description. To start, let's look at the interesting data from interviewing.io. They analyzed data from over 100,000 technical interviews and cross-referenced that with lead code profiles and LinkedIn employment history from over 700 people. The article is fascinating and kudos to interviewing.io and Mike Moratska for creating it. I provided a link to it in the description. But if you're not into reading, here are the four key takeaways. Number one, just get started. The data show that the total number of problems you solve matters, but there's a clear ceiling, so don't go over 500. But if you're at zero, none of this matters. What's most important is that you begin. Eyeballing the chart, you're already at the median with 300 questions completed. Number two, don't ignore hard problems. The difficulty level matters way more than the total number. Why is this? Because hard problems force you to combine multiple concepts, while easy and medium problems typically test one idea, like performing a depth first search or scanning an array, hard problems require you to piece together multiple techniques. You might need to use dynamic programming while maintaining a sliding window or implement a tree traversal while keeping track of prefix sums. Here's a hypothetical example based on their data. Take two fictional engineers. Alex has solved 690 problems, of which 630 were medium difficulty, and Kara has solved 210 problems in total, with 135 of them being hard problems. According to the data, these two would likely perform exactly the same in their interviews. That's right, the person solving five times as many medium problems and 450 more total problems is likely to have the same outcome as the person that solved many fewer hard problems. Number four in the article, but number three here is don't worry about contests unless you enjoy them. This was actually pretty surprising. There was no correlation between contest performance and getting jobs at top tech companies. So unless you actually enjoy competitive programming, your time is better spent elsewhere. I think the reason for this is that contest performance and interview success require different skills. In a contest, you're optimizing for speed and perfect solutions under intense time pressure. But in an interview, communication and problem solving approaches matter much more than raw coding speed. A great interviewer might take 15 minutes to think through and discuss their approach before writing any code. In a contest, that would be a disaster. Which gets us to the final tip. Not all hard problems are the same. When choosing problems to prepare with, find ones that one, have decent acceptance rates, meaning that they're actually solvable, two, show up frequently in real interviews, and three, have multiple valid solution approaches so you can tackle the problem from different angles. You don't maximize bang for your buck if you focus on questions that rely on a specific trick. So this got me thinking because I love superlatives. What's the hardest problem that's secretly easier than most mediums or even easies, but big tech companies love to ask it? Basically, what's the easiest hard question? What's the single hard problem that combines the most interview concepts and is asked by the most fang companies? 
In other words, what question gives you the most bang for your buck? And finally, the most interesting question for me is, what's the hardest question you're actually likely to see in a FANG interview? To answer these questions, I got data directly from the source. LeetCode has a GraphQL endpoint that you can hit directly. So I use Postman to give me a JSON dump of all 3,416 questions, which included the acceptance rate and topic tags. But their schema isn't publicly available. Apparently a public schema is a security threat vector and not the best practice. So I was unable to get the company tags programmatically. I wanted to gather the questions that were reported to be asked in the last six months from the five FANG companies. And I spent way too long trying to reverse engineer the API input and query to get the data. So I resorted to copying and pasting the results webpage and using Vim, regular expressions, and the command line to clean up the data and gather the question numbers, which I could use to join against the raw question dump. The results are Meta asks 78 hard questions in the last six months, Google 285, Amazon 157, Apple 19, and Netflix a grand total of one. After I aggregated and cleaned this data, I could answer the questions. I wrote some simple Python to parse the JSON, load the company specific data, and join it together. Let's answer our first question. The hard problem that's secretly more approachable than its difficulty rating suggests. Here's how we'll find it. We'll score each hard problem that appears in FANG interviews using four key factors. We square the acceptance rate because we want problems people can actually solve. A 30% acceptance rate scores nine times higher than 10%. Multiply that by the number of FANG companies using it. More companies means it's a proven interview problem. Then one over the number of topic tags, so a focus problem with two topics scores better than one with four. Finally, one over the log of the question ID gives a slight boost to older problems while keeping the newer gems in the mix. When we run this formula across every hard problem in LeetCode's database, our winner is reverse nodes in K group. Let's break down what makes this problem deceptively approachable. At first glance, it looks intimidating. You need to take a linked list and reverse it in groups of K nodes. If you have the list one, two, three, four, and five, and K equals two, you get two, one, four, three, five. With K equals three, you get three, two, one, four, five. But here's why this problem scored so well in our analysis. It's really just building on a fundamental concept that every developer learns, reversing a linked list. If you can reverse a simple linked list, a classic easy problem, you're 80% of the way there. The hard part is just adding two tweaks, only reverse K nodes at a time and keep track of the connections between the groups. That's why this problem has such a high acceptance rate despite being labeled as a hard. It's not testing some obscure algorithm or requiring complex mathematical insights. It's taking a basic concept that most people already know and adding one level of complexity on it. And that's exactly what makes it a favorite among Amazon, Meta, and Google. It tests if you can take a fundamental skill and adapt it to a slightly more complex scenario, which is exactly what you'll be doing day to day as a software engineer, along with handling all of the linked lists that need reversing. My analysis also surfaced other surprisingly approachable hard problems. The runner up, median of two sorted arrays, has a lower acceptance rate at 42%, but it's asked by all FANG companies, excluding Netflix, of course. Even the fifth place finisher, Robot Room Cleaner, has a whopping 77% acceptance rate. This tells us something important about lead code rankings. There are hard problems that are approachable. They aren't all impossible. Speaking of hard problems, let's talk about password security. After analyzing thousands of lead code problems, I can tell you that even the hardest coding challenges are nothing compared to the nightmare of having your credentials compromised. That's where NordPass comes in. Created by the same cybersecurity experts at NordVPN, NordPass is a password manager that helps prevent the kind of security disasters that keep software engineers awake at night. Just like how we carefully analyze these problems to find the most valuable ones, NordPass helps you manage your credentials intelligently and securely. Here's what makes NordPass perfect for tech professionals. Their encrypted vault stores all of your passwords securely. Cross-device sync works seamlessly across all platforms. The data breach scanner alerts you if your credentials are leaked on the dark web. Secure sharing lets teams share credentials and credit card details safely 
without compromising security, which means no more passwords in DMs or spreadsheets, and their password generator ensures that you're never using and reusing weak passwords. Be a professional and try NordPass out. No credit card is required. For a free three-month NordPass business trial, use the code engineered at nordpass.com slash engineered. Thanks again to NordPass for sponsoring today's video. Now for our second question. Let's find the hard problem that gives you the most bang for your buck in interview prep. We want the problem that teaches you the most concepts while being frequently asked by FANG companies. We start with the number of FANG companies that ask this question. This is crucial because we want problems that consistently show up in their recent interviews. Then multiply by the square of the number of topic tags. We square it because we really want problems that combine multiple concepts. A problem with four topics will score four times higher than one with two topics. Next, we include the acceptance rate with a 0.5 weight. While we care less about the acceptance rate here, we still want the problem to be reasonably solvable. And finally, we use one over the log of the question ID again to give a slight boost to establish problems while keeping the newer ones in the mix. When we analyze every hard problem in LeetCode, our winner is longest increasing path in a matrix. And it's a perfect example of what we're looking for. You're given a grid of numbers and your task is to find the longest path where each number is strictly greater than the previous one. You can move up, down, left or right, but not diagonally. For example, in a path like one, two, six and nine, each number must be larger than the last. What makes this problem good is how it combines multiple concepts. You might first think of it as a depth first search problem, exploring all possible paths. But then you realize you need dynamic programming because you're solving the same sub problems repeatedly. And surprisingly, it's actually a graph problem in disguise. Each cell is a node and the increasing relationship form directed edges. Some solutions even use topological sorts to solve it. The single problem combines eight different fundamental concepts, arrays, dynamic programming, depth first search, breadth first search, graph algorithms, topological sort, memoization, and matrix operations. It's a masterclass in algorithmic thinking, all packed into one problem. With the 54% acceptance rate, it's challenging, but definitely solvable. And it's been used by Amazon, Meta, and Google in their interviews within the last six months. But it's not the only gem we found. Let me show you some other problems that give you the most interviewing prep value. Number two is trapping rainwater. It combines five different techniques, including two pointers, dynamic programming, and stack operations. Number three is the skyline problem. It tests seven concepts, including divide and conquer, binary index trees, and heap operations. Four is word break two. It covers seven areas from dynamic programming to tries. And number five is the smallest range covering elements from K lists, which brings together six concepts, including sliding windows and heap operations. If you're preparing for interviews in big tech and want to make the most of your study time, these five problems should be at the top of your list. They're like the Swiss army knives of coding problem. Each one teaches required multiple tools that you'll need in your interview arsenal. Finally, let's find the Mount Everest of Fang interview questions. Here's the hardest problem you're actually likely to encounter in the wild. We start with one over the square of the acceptance rate. We square it because we really want the most challenging problems. A problem with 10% acceptance will score nine times higher than one with 30% acceptance. Then we multiply by the number of Fang companies that asked it. This is important because we only want problems that companies actually use, not theoretical monsters. Next, we multiply by the number of topic tags. More topics mean more complexity. And we're looking for problems that combine multiple concepts in challenging ways. And finally, we use one over the log of the question ID again to give a slight boost to establish problems while keeping recent problems in the mix. When we run this formula across LeetCode's database, our winner is partition array into two arrays to minimize some difference. And it's a perfect example of why some problems are genuinely hard. Let's break it down. You're given an array with an even number of integers and you need to split it into two arrays of equal length while minimizing the difference between their sums. Sounds simple, right? It's not. With an array of size 2n, you're essentially looking at two to the n possible ways to split it up. A brute force approach would be completely impractical. The optimal solution requires a mix of multiple advanced techniques, 
You need binary search, dynamic programming, and bit manipulation working together. It's like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube while playing chess. This problem has only a 21% acceptance rate, the lowest in our top five, and it's used by Google, Meta, and Amazon in their interviews. It combines seven different concepts from two pointers to bit masks. The fact that it's a relatively new problem, but still top the list tells you something. It's not just theoretically difficult. It's genuinely a challenging problem that top companies are actively using to test candidates. And while that's our winner, the other problems in our top five are equally as hard. Regular expression matching comes in at number two with only a 28% acceptance rate. It asks you to implement the kind of pattern matching that powers tools like Rep and Sed. What makes it particularly tricky is handling the wildcard patterns. If you've ever wondered why regexes are both powerful and painful, implementing it will show you why. Reverse pairs at number three sounds deceptively simple. Count the number of pairs where one number is more than twice another but it combines seven different concepts and requires sophisticated data structures like binary index trees or segment trees to solve it efficiently. Speaking of complexity, medium of two sorted arrays appears at number four. And interestingly, this same problem also ranked high in our secretly easy category. This makes perfect sense when you look at the scoring criteria. It has a relatively high acceptance rate at 42%, which boosted its secretly easy score, but it's also asked by all fan companies except Netflix and combines multiple fundamental concepts, which pushed it towards the top of our hardest list. It goes to show how looking at the same thing in different ways can make it a really easy question or a really hard one or that my scoring functions need some work. And routing out our top five is max points on the line, a geometry problem that tests your ability to handle edge cases and floating point precision issues. With only 28% acceptance and required by all fan companies except Netflix, it's a classic hard problem that has stood the test of time. And there you have it. This was a really fun project for me. I got to do some coding, play with some data, and discover some fascinating patterns in the code problems. Using just a few simple formulas, I was able to identify problems that are surprisingly approachable, maximally efficient for interview prep, and challenging in ways that matter. If you're preparing for interviews right now, remember what we learned from that interviewing.io research. You don't need to solve every problem on LeetCode. Focus on understanding problems deeply rather than racing through hundreds of them. And maybe start with some of the problems we've identified today. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Should I analyze this data in different ways? Maybe look for patterns in medium problems or find questions that test specific concepts? Let me know what you'd like to see. If you found this video useful, remember none of this matters if you're not getting callbacks and landing interviews in the first place. Check out my video on how to stand out in an insanely competitive tech market. Coding skills alone aren't going to get you that new job.